All right, shalom, y'all. Uh, your boy Michael Israel here. Um, you're watching Spiritual Combat. And today, I'm, I got a big interview. Um, I got Brother Donald, uh, Ronald Dalton here, the writer of the book Hebrews to Negroes, and also uh, the documentary Hebrews to Negroes. And uh, here he is. And shalom, brother. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. It, it, I'm, I'm happy to have you here. Um, and if you could, uh, could you tell uh, the audience about, um, tell them a little bit about the work you've done, uh, the uh, some of the, the book you wrote and the documentary you've done, a little bit about it? Yeah, so the the book, uh, the Hebrews and Eagles book, I, I published the first book in 2014 and the next year i did the second book and the next year after that i did the third book the next year after that i did the fourth book and in between writing well in between writing the fourth book i decided to start to put together uh, the hebrews the negroes wake up black america uh documentary because a lot of a lot of people uh you know they say well you know i'm not going to read a 700 page book <laughs> and 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 even my publisher said, well, Ron, you know, you know, most most black people are not going to read a 700 page book and they're going to be intimidated by it. Originally, when I first wrote the first book, it was there's a thousand pages. Wow. And my publisher said, no, 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 Ron, Ron, you can't you can't do a thousand pages, Ron. You got to cut it. And I said, no, nah, it's a lot of information I got to put out. And so I cut it to 700. But we're in an age now where uh, people there into the, the, the Netflix and voodoo and the streaming and DVDs and Redbox. So I said, you know, if, the, if black people are not gonna get this message with a, with a book, then I'm gonna try and he try and go ahead and put together a documentary. Um, and I'm gonna use my own money. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get this out uh, into the media media stream. And so I started that process about two years ago. And it doesn't seem like two years, but it, it, I mean, cause, cause I've been steady working at it, chipping away at it. Uh, but it has been about two years. The GoFundMe that I, that I started for the, for the movie project uh, because this this uh, whole movie project is not cheap, you know. Getting clips, uh, footage, getting uh, pictures, making sure you have the right licenses and, and and everything like that, it costs a lot of money. And that's one probably one of the reasons why we don't see really see any Hebrew Israelite movies out there. Because one, uh, we still haven't grasped the the concept of unity where we all come together uh, with our skills. Like it's because a lot of Hebrew Israelites that have uh, videography, videography skills, uh, skills in photography skills in, in editing, uh, skills in acting, I mean, all types of skills, but we don't, we haven't yet, you know, I guess, uh, figured out how we can all come together to make this happen on a larger scale. Because yeah. if you really look at it, uh, the majority of the Hebrew like community in America, even in, in the UK and the Caribbean, even in Africa, we should be able to chip in monies to make a movie. I mean, even, even a documentary movie is cheaper than making a full-fledged movie. Because you don't need actors, you don't, you know, you don't need actors. You don't need uh, have a score and all these different things that, that that typical Hollywood movies have. You know, documentaries basically interviewing people, uh, doing street footage and then B-rolls. Um, and you know, and that and you know, the B-roll footage, you know, can you know can be pricey. But you know, if we if we come together, then we can do that. And 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 then to, to put it on that also, and not even money wise, but just being able to work together wise helps out because different people bring different um skills you know to the pot and i i would say since i've hooked up with these brothers in in, in uh hebrew nation builders and boom church and stuff like that where we're coming together the the main uh similarity among all these brothers is that they all have that that uh a teamwork mindset that the spirit of brotherhood it's really enabled a lot of things to begin to come, you know, to begin to move forward. That that's one of the things I've noticed, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a there's a lot of Hebrews that are uh, that are into the music. Um, you know, of course, when you do music, you got to do a little video. So when you see the Hebrews doing their music videos, you see the skills that that, that these people have. Whether yeah. it's a, whether it's a Hebrew doing the editing, or whether it's a, you know a guy that's not into the truth that's you know me, you may have grow up with. On the streets or in the neighborhood, uh, we have the ability to do films um, because you're looking at the videos. You can see the videos are high, are high quality. They're good work. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, so, you know, I, I, I know a lot of Hebrews that always say, man, you know, I want to do a documentary. I want to do a movie. Um, you know, my friend has knows how to do this, knows how to use that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, you know, I, with me, I kind of get tired of talking about it. And I get tired of the Hidden Colors series. Like, it seems like every year we keep getting the Hidden Colors, one, two, three, four, five, and, <laughs> and they, they never address who we really are. They always dress white supremacy, uh, the white man's holding us down, you know, Jim Crow, the slave codes, you know, Egypt this and Egypt that, and 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 and, and talk about Christ and the zodiac and the and the, and the winter solstice, and they never really address really who we are. Yeah. And, and you and, and, that, and that's like you know that's the, supposed to be the conscious community giving us videos to watch. But then when you look at uh, modern, uh, you know, media, you look at Twelve Years a Slave, The Butler, The Django. All these slave movies coming out year after year after year, and then we get you know a couple of Tyler Perry movies, you know, to make us laugh and giggle, and then you get, <laughs> you get Black Panther, you know, as produced by you know by CEOs that are Jewish, in Marvel Studios and Walt Disney Studios are the CEOs are Jewish people. Yeah, you know, so they they know how to mastermind and 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 make money off of us, but then in the same token, they they showing they showing us. Things about ourselves, you know, like like I don't know if people really know. We in the, about half of the film of Black Panther, it was the it was the Wakandas fighting against each other. Yeah, you know, they were fighting against each other. You know, half of the way they were fighting against each other. You had different different divisions of the of the Wakanda tribe or the clan, you know. And then you had a white man that kind of that kind of was was critical in saving the day, you know. And then you had the guy who was trying to liberate the black people in Wakanda, Killmonger, and he 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 actually won the proper battle fight. You know, and should have been king, I guess, under the, under the under yeah, the, that's what I said. Yeah, the rules, but you know, they didn't want him to be king. You know, yeah. so you know, and he was all about, you know, liberating the people. Like, why should you have this, this uh, country or, or or place called Wakanda, and everybody else black is just struggling, they starving, they in the ghetto. You know, they they oppress, and it's just it just shows you what's going on today. Except for they flipped it in a Marvel film, and we thought it was you know it was an awakening. You know, in, in a sense, you know, it may have been awakening for some people, but, you know, we still need to do our own movies um, where we can show the curses of Israel, you know, how, how we got, how we can reverse this, how we can start to fix some of the things that's going on, you know, in, in black America. Uh, and then, you know, like the like Hebrew Nation Bill, they talk about awakening and, and, and restore and prepare. You know, these things, you know, you can only get once you come into the truth. Yeah. So, you know, with the, with the movie, uh, I'm hoping to, to really hammer home the message of who we are and then start to open up people's minds challenge their brain to think because a lot of us we don't think we just we just group think and, and watch tv and think about what and that, and and the thing with that television is that's the it, tell live vision you know what i'm saying it, and that's how what they use to program us and a lot of people are unaware of how powerful that programming coming from from that television is and yeah. it's like you can expect a, 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 a project like this, once that hits the mainstream, you know, it's going to be all lies on you, man. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> you know, I'm prepared. You know, I, I'm just, I'm so fed up. I, a lot of black people should be fed up. You know, Michael Mech said that, one, he said that if you have, if everybody is fed up in a black, a black American community, then, then that's what the nations don't want. They want us, they don't want us to be fed up. They want... 80% of us be fed up, but then 20% of us to say, you know, I'm, I got a nice house. I live in live in the suburbs. Yeah. I got a, a dog. My kids go to nice schools. They're in college. And so as long as you got Negroes saying that everything's good over here in America, it, we, it's nothing going on. We ain't slaves. We're not oppressed. Then you then you know, you're always you're not going to see the big picture. And like Michael Mack said, you know, you can't wake up a sleeping people. Uh, and he realized that that the the whole part of the mission was to wake people was to you know, the uh, was to go one way. But if people weren't woke yet. Then it was like it's like a lost cause, and that's why in one of his speeches he was talking about now, who are you? You know, don't don't call, don't say Negro. That's not your name. You know, and, and so he was basically breaking down, saying how the 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 nations and white supremacy has dumbed us down. Yeah, you know, dumbed us down. Has basically has basically programmed us, programmed us to want and think what they want us to think. And mm -hmm. and and their main tool of doing that is the media that they control the culture through the hip hop and all that stuff like that. I mean, that's one of their main tools. Um, you know, but I got a question for you. Tell me, how'd you come into the truth of, as far as knowing, uh, becoming aware that you were a Hebrew? Oh, okay. So 
Ooh, that's a long story. But um, <laughs> okay. So my my father is a is a is a pastor, and they belong to the um, Church of Lord Jesus Christ, which is a large um, uh, church organization, Pentecostal, Apostolic in in the United States. And you have the Church of God in Christ. Um, it's also heavy here in Michigan. But um, you know, growing up growing up on in the black church. You know, I, uh, you know, we went to church Wednesdays, we went to church Thursday, Fridays. If we had revivals, we were going to church pretty much all week. Uh, and so, we, you know, I was constantly brought up in church, you know, in Bible class and in Sunday school and children's church and how, you know, you would, you in, in Sunday school, you would get those little lesson books and you had like a white, you had like all the pages had, had white people with long hair. And so <laughs> your mom would be like, okay, you got to color in Jesus and Joseph. And Mary, and you know, I'm like, well, I, I, I need, I guess I need a white crayon or a yellow crayon. <laughs> I, I need all these other crayons for it. I don't need a brown crayon unless I'm trying to paint, do the tree. And so, you know, as I got older and, and more smarter, because I went to going to school, I started to ask my, my dad questions about, um, you know, well, you know, where are black people at? You know, who are we? And, you know, and, 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 uh, and, you know, who are the giants and all this sort of stuff. And, and most of the times the church, you know, things that the pastor can't really explain, they say, oh, not right now. You know, you, you, you're holding the class. Maybe at the end of the either, day. Either, either that or they'll guilt you out. They'll guilt you out for, for questioning. <laughs> yeah, they, they say you're disrupting the class. You know, yeah. we're trying to stay, stay on the focus. We're, we go, let's go to Galatians. You know, you, you're trying to, you, you skip in, but you don't want to explain what you don't, what you first started out at and you jumped in the New Testament. And so I just was like frustrated. And, and eventually I just stopped, you know, asking. And, you know, and we, and we kind of, we moved to an area where there was a lot, of, a lot of Jewish people. But when I was a kid, I used to see all these, these white people walking around with black hats and, and, and beards and sideburns and caps on their heads. And I remember one time I asked my mom, I said, I said, Mama, who are these people walking around all the time? You know, people's driving cars, they're walking around. And mom was there, well, well, Ronald, those are the Jews of the Bible. What do we read? And I said, well, Mama, who are we? And she said, we're the Gentiles. And I, I still didn't understand what a Gentile meant growing up, um, you know, because the, because, because, in, in service, you know, the, the preacher always says the Gentiles be saved. Gentiles, say, Savior for the Gentiles. The Gentiles can be saved. So it's all about saving the Gentile. Uh, and, of course, Israel uh, was the chosen people. And whenever uh, black folk are, are watching the news and something's popping off in Israel, they say, oh, they messing with the Jews. They messing with the Jews. Yeah. They shouldn't be bombing the Jews. God's going to get them. You know, they're going to get a curse. And they shouldn't mess with the Jews. They're going to they gonna bring the end of days sooner than we want it. And, uh, and I used to just, I used to look and just be like, this, this doesn't make any sense. So when I got older and, and I went to college and I graduated and, and I was living in a different part of the city in, in Michigan, um, sometimes they would have different men's days and, and, and choirs and, I mean, not choirs, but, um, like concerts. And I would come down and, uh, and, and come, arrive late and sit in the back of church. And, and one day I was sitting in the back of the church and the pastor was speaking, uh, and I started reading Deuteronomy and, at the time, I was working at uh, Sinai Grace Hospital in Detroit. It's the inner city hospital, one of the major hospitals in Detroit where, where you see the, the most trauma. Uh, all the gunshots, the stab wounds, domestic violence, al alcohol toxicity, cocaine overdose, heroin overdose, you name it, we, we've seen it there. Um, and so, you know, when I'm, when I'm working in the trauma room, working in the ER, I'm seeing how, how bad, you know, it is in the black community year after year after year. You know, you're not, you're seeing... You know all types of stuff going on in the youth. You know in terms of um, drug abuse and and suicide and, and mental disorders. And then you're also seeing it in the elderly. You're seeing people who are 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old on cocaine and heroin. And I just be like, Dang. you guys be like, why is it? Why is it seem like we're just a downtrodden, oppressed people that we we we're, we have we're we're oppressed on every level, political, academically, you know, economically, the domestic life, you know, domestic household. With the broken families and 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 the friends of the court and, and violence and divorce, all that stuff. And so, when I was reading Deuteronomy 28 and and going through the curses, I said to myself, I said, this sounds like us, you know. Especially when you get to the end, it talks about ships. I said, this sounds like us. I was like, I don't remember when the, when the Holocaust occurred with ships and how the Jewish people got to Israel and with you know uh, to, with, with, with ships or or were taken away with ships. And so, you know, I, I asked a, a junior pa junior pastor, a friend of mine. Um, and I asked him, I said, Hey, I said, Hey, uh, do you, do you ever read Deuteronomy 28 and, and think that the curses of Israel are talking about us? And he was like, well, his guy was like, this guy was like about almost six years old. He said, well, 
you know, Ronald, he said, when I was your age, you know, I thought the same thing. And I asked my pastors and my deacons, and they were like, basically, no, you know, you're talking crazy, you know, you know, you need to, you know, you, you need to come back, you know, you backslide, you just come back, don't, 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 don't talk about this. So then he left it alone, and he said that uh, lately he had been feeling the same way. Wow. And, and I told him, I said, well, I, I believe we're all the children of Israel. And he said, you know, Ronald, um, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to say you're wrong. And so, you know, so that when that happened, you know, I basically went home. I remember one night I went home and I was in the shower and I was really confused because a lot of guys at work, uh, some of the guys that worked, I was kind of conscious, kind of, kind of awake. And they might've been listening to Sign Netter and, and looking at stuff on YouTube about the Illuminati and, and different things in the Boulay Society. They had, you know, told me some things. And, you know, at that time I was, I was asleep. And when they told me these things, they said, just, you know, if you don't believe me, just go look it up. And I go home and I look it up and I'm like, man, he's right. You know, he's right. You know, like, golly, this is like shaking me up. <laughs> so, yeah, it was shaking me up, you know, because I thought I knew it all. You know, but then, you know, I said, you know, it really was staring, staring up, you know, a lot of things inside of me. And I asked, I asked, you know, God, I said, I said, show me the truth and, exp and show me the truth from the lies. And so when I said that prayer, and I was I was I was sincere because I was really like you know confused and stuff, um, and, and I started studying you know the most I started revealing to me a lot of these these things you know about you know how all, all the deceptions going on with the Jews and 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 people saying they're Jews and they're not and black people and I started writing every I started writing stuff down I started saving stuff on my computer I started printing stuff off uh, on the printer and just stockpiling the folders. I started screenshotting. I was doing everything, compiling all the information I could. <laughs> and then after after about two years of stockpiling information, I was so excited. You know, I was going around telling people in Detroit wherever I was at. And when I would tell from Detroit, I would kind of gather like crowds. And people would be standing there listening. And and, and young kids, older guys were like, yeah, man, he's right, he's right, he's right. <laughs> but then when I tried to approach it, because really, really, the, really what I wanted to do was when I first got this information, I wanted to... Uh, teach this at all the churches and church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I wanted to like show this to the pastor, the, the presiding apostle pastor. And I wanted to, um, you know, teach this at my church in, in different um, diocese meetings or conventions that they have, because, you know, usually in the, in the daytime at these conventions, they have seminars and workshops and they have, you know, it's using a hotel and you, they have people outside selling, you know, Bibles and different little things that they made. Uh, and during that time, people are also going into workshops, and getting taught different things from women and, and men. But when I when I tried to do that, uh, my mom and dad was like, "No, it's not. It's not the right time. You know, this is not, this is this is not what we need right now. And you know, you, you can't. You know, you, you got to remember that that it's all about Jesus. It's all about salvation. Um, every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus. There is no other name. And don't talk about the Jews. You know, the Jews are white. Oh, they just basically shoot me down." <laughs> You're not big time, you know, basically saying, you know, basically going to the, the Galatians, the Colossians and, and the Pauline scriptures to shoot me down that I was I was talking about history. And so I said, so I, so I remember sitting with a with a pastor. I, I, he, he was at a coffee shop and, you know, he told me he told me like, you know, man, ain't they church ain't gonna listen to you, man. And I was like, so I was like, so, you know, this he's like, yeah, man, I said, Jesus, ain't, Jesus ain't white. And, and this is a major pastor in the <laughs> of Detroit. And I ain't gonna say the name. But it's a major pastor, a, a major pastor uh, of a church in Detroit, like a, almost like a mega pastor. And he said to me, he said, I said, why don't you tell your, your church the truth? He's like, because if I do, man, he said they can't handle it. I could, I could lose, I could, you know, lose my church. I could be reprimanded, blah blah blah. And you know, I just, I just tell my family, and that's it. And I just shook my head and was like. <laughs> Cause it's about that money at the end of the day for them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I said you have an obligation to tell your sheep and, and lead them with the truth. And he was like, "Oh, you know, come on now, you know, you know, people can't handle the truth." And so I said, "Well, you know what? If nobody in my church organization is gonna is gonna listen to this, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put this into a book." And I had never wrote a book before. I had just you know went to school, um, and and graduated from college and and. So when I started writing a book, I just basically chapped it out. Like, now, now, when did you uh, graduate? What type of studies, you know, what, uh, did you study in college? Okay, so when I went to undergrad, um, I didn't. 
I didn't know what I wanted to do when I first went to uh, college. I, you know, I, 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 for a lot of black people, when you go to college, you know, you're in the mindset, oh, pre-med, pre-med, pre-med mm -hmm. or law. You know, that's if you want to make money, you go pre-med or law. Um, you know, but I wasn't really strong in the sciences. And so I originally majored in, uh, I think, biology. Uh -huh. um, and, and when I realized that uh, as the higher courses in biology got to, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. I was like, man, this is some tough stuff. <laughs> and so I said, get this. And so then I, I, trans I, I changed my major to uh, computer science. But then when I did computer science, I realized that you had to, you had to, uh, you know, take certain classes and in the, in the higher level computer classes, I, I just was not getting it at all. I wasn't a computer person at all. I, I mean, I, I played video games, but the computer <laughs> coding, all that stuff, I just not did not understand it. So then I switched my major to psychology. I, I didn't really, you know, was feeling that. And then I switched over to sports medicine um, because I like because I was in sport I was in sports in high school, and I kind of wanted to do stuff with the sports teams. But when I graduated from, from college, uh, it was in um, the degree of, of sports medicine. But then I went went later to um, physician assistant school, um, and and got into the program. The first black male to get into the program at the Wayne State um, Physician Assistant Studies in, in in Detroit. First black male. I mean, you look at the you look at the wall. With all the plaques of the, the previous graduates, uh, you'll see a number of white people, and so that's so what I do. So what I do right now in my career is I'm a, a physician assistant. So you know that's um, deal with you know patients in the out outpatient care setting and the inpatient care setting. Okay, okay, and um, how how did you end up uh, meeting um, with the Hebrew Nation builders like Josh Cullens and uh, Morris William, uh, Williams? How'd you end up meeting those guys? Okay, so um, back around, I forgot what time, it might have been a year or two ago, um, I was on Instagram, and and this group called Reformed Apologetics, um, I think Ministries, I think, I think there might be a white group. They came out with a, they, they said they were coming out with a movie that was going to debunk the African Hebrew Israelites. And, <laughs> You know, in, in the documentary, they kept saying fake African Hebrew Israelites, fake African Hebrew Israelites. And I was like, man, and, and, and the trailer looked like a full-fledged movie. Like, they was about to just tear up and debunk this whole, you know, this whole thing that, that the Hebrew Roots movement was teaching. And when I saw that, a lot of people were responding to it. A lot of people had listened to what they were saying, and they were saying, like, a lot of black people now are confused. They think that we're Kushites. They think that we're not the people because whenever a white person comes out with a documentary and they and they make it look educated and and informative, you start you believe them. Yeah. You know, you just erase what the black person told you. You believe them. And so, at the time, I was doing I was working on my movie, but I knew my movie was going to be out fast enough to debunk what they got to say. So then, like a week, like not too long long after, my boy from the from New York, uh, Sean, he said uh, he said he said hey yo man, he's like did you see the the video come back to apologize to perform the debunk. And I said, no, nah, who, who did the video? Who did the movie? He was like, man, Hebrew Nation building. And so I said, well, send me the link. So he sent me the link and I went to it and I and I seen it and I was like, damn, this is two and a, two and a half hours long on YouTube? I was, like, I was like, all right. So I watched it and I watched it like, it took two days to watch it. And when I watched it, I was like, I was like, man, these brothers, man, whoever these brothers are, man, they is on point. They like thinking like me. They, 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 <laughs> And they're not coming with just Deuteronomy 28 and yelling out the scriptures. They come in with actual, actual historical facts, scriptures, historical quotes, you know, using logic and critical thinking to, to prove uh, these guys wrong. And so when 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 it was over, if I called my boy, I was like, man, that, that man, I need to know who these guys are. And so when he uh, he told me like, man, I'm gonna get to the, I'm gonna get you the email. So then so then I I, I think I email I emailed them and then Morris called me. Morris called me. And so he was like, uh, he said, yeah, I'm Morris. Uh, he, uh, you, uh, you wanted to talk to me? And I said, yeah, this is Ron Dalton, Arthur, he roots the Negroes. And he's like, oh, man, man, you know, I, you know, they, they told me that you, you were trying to get in touch with us. And I was like, well, who was the person that was narrating the video? Who was the person that, that, was, that helped put this together? He was like, well, me and, me and my partner, Josh, South Carolina, man, he, he was the main one put, put, put behind his work. And I said, man, I need to talk to you guys, man, because I, I'm, 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 I really – Believe that we need to come together and and you and put our heads together and what we know to tear down all this you know this foolishness and 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 I and I said I believe that with what you guys did with the editing and the video, even though it's on YouTube, I said you ever you ever thought about considering doing a, a movie, 
you know, and I know we put a lot of movies on on YouTube, like the watch the Watchman puts out Wired Out. Uh, but you know, a lot of times, you know, we need to put something out where, you know, we can get it on maybe Amazon, maybe even get it on Netflix, you know, or maybe even premiere it in small theaters or or, or, or venues or or places where we can get an audience and get a projector uh, and get a screen. And so, you know, they they were like, oh yeah, yeah, that that sounds good, that sounds good. And so that's that's kind of like how I I, I met uh, Morris and Josh. Uh, through that video, I yeah. mean, that video really, really was the the catalyst. Yeah, that 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 was a good video. Like to date, that's the like that's the most informative one. Like if I run across somebody, um, like there was a brother at my job, and I had told him about this, and that's my go-to video where I, I'll show it to someone, and that it, it's it's powerful, man. It, it's a powerful, uh, it's a powerful thing. And these people, the people who control things, they know how powerful a well put together documentary or movie is. And mm -hmm. that's part of why that B-roll footage is so mm -hmm. expensive because that's a big part of the storytelling. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you could, could you tell us a little about the, um, the event that you guys are having in New York? the uh, rec uh reclaiming the the throne conference and I, yeah, I, yeah. I just pulled it up here on the screen there we go and if you could tell us a little uh tell us what that conference all about okay so um so Josh and Morris they, they do their you know they, they got their conferences they do and when we decided to come out with this movie uh we did the trailer back in this January December um you know, we we started to go fund me, and when we started to go fund me, uh, and we put for the goal a million dollars, and that caught a lot of flack uh, with the Hebrew, at least uh, the Hebrew community in particular, Mr. Hebrew, over there in St. Louis. And so, you know, we we you know, like you say with the B-roll, people don't really understand how much money it, it costs to do. Uh, uh, you know, a, a movie, and you know, and, and if I could, real quick, uh, for those who don't know, who who aren't familiar with film and stuff, B-roll footage is a footage, like for instance, if you're narrating something, and say you're talking about like today is the Fourth of July, while the narrator's talking about the Fourth of July, on a documentary, some footage would come up showing the American flag waving, and then maybe fireworks going up. Well, that, that footage is called the B-roll footage, and it helps tell the story. And um, what uh, Brother Ronald's talking about is, is the fact that that footage ain't cheap. Like, uh, m majority of that footage, uh, the, the main place these uh, people get it from is it's called, I think it's called Getty.com or something like that. And that footage, like, let's just say the footage I just mentioned um maybe a, a 10 second clip of some fireworks going up in the air that might cost you five six seven hundred dollars you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying yeah um it like uh me, me and uh we were talking about earlier trying to get a clip of martin luther king doing his i had a dream speech yeah. for a couple seconds might be in the thousands yes you know it's because because what people don't <laughs> you don't realize <clears throat> when you go to getty you can get the whole Martin Luther King I Have a Dream speech in, in D.C. and SD, HD, 4K, it'll be the whole thing. It won't be just 10 seconds. It won't be in a, in a poor resolution. But they're going to want they're gonna want to know how you're going to use it. They're going to know how people are going to do it. They're gonna, they want to know all that stuff. And and so they're going to charge you in the thousands uh, for that. But when you go to other websites, they may have Martin Luther King I Have a Dream speech, but it's going to be like 10 seconds. It's going to be low resolution. It may not even have audio linked to it. I mean, it, some of them don't have audio, and that's just Martin Luther King. So imagine if you do a B-roll and you want to talk about the Dome of the Rock in Israel, or the Al Oscar Mosque, or you want to talk about <laughs> uh, the Wailing Wall, or you want to talk about Egypt and the pyramids, or talk about Sinai Peninsula, any of this stuff. Now, unless we have actually fly to these areas with a camera crew, which is expensive, then you know we have to find a way to get the footage, uh, make sure that it's, that it's not copyrighted, uh, to put in the movie because you know, you know, synagogue of Satan and the powers of be, 
you know, they if, if anything is not legit, they can come at it in a certain way and shut it down. Yeah, just and they and they control all that. I mean, shoot, go see who the CEO of Getty is. I don't know who it is, but I'm sure you 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 yeah. go on there, you'll figure out <laughs> pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, all those all those Getty, Corbis, Alamine, Shutterstock. I mean, you got so many different ones, but the, those are the main ones like Corbis and Getty and different ones. Um, but this, these, these are the things that these are the, the barriers that we we face, and a lot of Africans, uh, a lot of West Africans know. Uh, when you do a movie, you say, "Oh, we're doing a movie about, about our heritage." They say, "Have you been to Africa?" And you be like, "No, I never been to Africa." Like I, they, they say, "I advise you go to Africa." You know, you, you get it firsthand from the horse's mouth, and that's something we want to do. But of course, it costs money. Yeah, and and not all the time uh, can you get that B-roll footage in Africa. Even I think even Hidden Colors. Uh, they they may have Renika Rashiki or I forgot his, whatever his name is. Uh, he did some footage in in different um, in different um, countries that they use head colors. But uh, so with all that stuff, you know, all this, these expensive that expenses that we are trying to get for the movie, that you know we're trying to get through GoFundMe. But you know we all know that as black people, we still are, are stingy and cheap. We don't want to come together and and donate uh, to a cause. Um, you know, like real easy. You think that 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 you would have the funding for the movie like in in, in like a month, um, with all the Hebrews just all chipping in, and and donating to this. But we have you have people, like the camps. You have different assemblies. You have uh, different uh, people that have different viewpoints. They said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna contribute to this movie because they're not a part of our camp. Or they and don't, and they don't yeah, and that and that's, I mean, and it ain't. It ain't even like we don't have the money because I mean you had a bunch of black women in Georgia raise what six million dollars to get your boy Creflo a plane, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just a, a one church in Georgia. That you know what I'm saying, and they did that I think in a little over a month. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, they, you know, pastors, you know, they don't have. Uh, like Omar Tibu and 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 other, you know, people they don't have they don't have a problem asking for monies to do whatever they need to do. And and it seems like when you're in a church setting, uh, a building setting, people just just freely give. Uh, but because the Hebrew Israelite movement is not necessarily a church, you have camps, you have assemblies, small assemblies scattered different different places. You have a lot of people that don't have anywhere to go, and they follow different people on YouTube, their favorite Hebrew educator on YouTube. Um, we rely on on social media to try to get the, get the people to know about what we're doing in, in the reclaiming the throne movie, so that we can get the donations. And so that's why we decided to come out with the tour conference and hit certain cities to kind of get the word out more about the movie and draw up attention and draw up you know uh, when you draw up attention from from the different cities you go to and different church folk and different things like that. Then then and maybe they may see oh. You know, we need to support this because yeah, yeah, and that and that's part of my big. That's why I see um, y'all working with me at is using my skills to get the word out about this big work that's going on. Um, my wife just asked um, a good question on here. She said, uh, "If people want to donate, where should they go?" Okay, so if they want to donate to. Um to the Reclaiming the Throne, they just go to uh, www.gofundme.com backslash Reclaiming the Throne. All they got to do is type in those words. You know, I mean, you don't even have to use a www anymore. I think you just type in gofundme.com backslash Reclaiming the Throne to donate to that movie. And then if you want to donate to the, the movie that I started two years ago, which is going to drop this year, you can do the same thing, www.gofundme.com backslash Hebrews Negroes. Uh, because basically you're going to see the Hebrew Sneakers movie drop, you're going to hit him in the head, then you're going to hear see, the Re Reclaiming the Throne is going to come around the corner in 2019. It's going to like basically give him another uppercut, and we're going to keep it. <laughs> we're going to one, it, two punch. <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep it going. Like Once once we get these movies out, people are going, people are going to see that we ain't playing. You know, yeah. when he put in Hebrew Sneakers, uh, D28 Productions, and all of the Hebrews that are um, that are on board in this movie, and even um, some of the people that, you know, we might we consider the Gentiles, uh, they all are on board with teaching the truth, and and we're trying to get as many people as we can to donate monies to help us to do this to do this movie, and so we're coming to uh, New York and New Jersey, August the 25th uh, to the 26th. So 25th will be in New York and Harlem, at um, 
Christ uh, Temple in the Village of Harlem Church. Um, and like right and like I said, that's right here on this flyer. And I got I have this flyer, uh, Brother Morris. I think he dropped it, and um, it's because uh, I'm pretty sure you guys could see it. I I I I'll make it bigger on here. Let me make it bigger so y'all can see. There you go. So you can see the information on there. And 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 that flyer is on um, the Hebrew Nation Builders website. Um, I mean, on their Facebook page. Yeah, they, well, they we have it's two flyers we have out right now um, that are circulating. Um, the the Hebrew, the rebirth of a nation dot info um, website has has the um, has a flyer on there. But if you want to get to the actual event page, you go to we go to rebirth of a nation dot info. Uh, backslash event and then you'll see the the whole thing pop up and then if you want to register for the tickets on both days then you can do so and then um because the tickets are uh are had, we have limited availability because we only have about 120 seating capacity for each day you know at, at the, each event one in new jersey one in, in harlem and then we will have a deadline so you want to you don't want to wait till the last minute to try to get your ticket because you may not have that ticket or a seating available uh, so this, you know, this is in the heart of Harlem in New, in New Jersey, uh, which is right, you know, right down the street, basically. And, and we want as many people as, as they can to come, uh, not just people that are woken into the truth already, but people that are uh, maybe in the black church they, or they came out the black church. They don't have nowhere to go. They're kind of like in between a limbo on, on, on how they feel about the whole uh, black people being the Hebrew Israelites. Now, um, if you could, well, it, when they come to this event, what can they expect? Like, what, what's the, uh, you know, what's going, what's the whole event going to be about? Is there going to be speakers there? Or? Uh, yeah, it's going to be me, um, Joshua, Joshua Collins, and Morris Williams Jr., and also Only Love Austin. She's the um, the author of the book, uh, Prophetic Whirlwind: uh, Covering the Black Biblical Destiny. Uh, and she uh, is a is a part of a Hebrew congregation in, in Harlem, in New York City. And she does a lot of speaking engagements in New York City. And, and she just got back from uh, meeting up with the Hebrew Israelites, uh, the Bantu Hebrew Israelites in West Africa, in Nigeria, in Ghana. Um, so she has a lot of connections over there uh, with the Sefway Jews and the Nigerian Igbo Jews. Um, and she knows the whole you know story about what's going on with the Ashkenazis coming in there trying to infiltrate with their Talmudic Judaism and use their money as bait and as a stronghold uh, leveraged uh, with with the uh, with the Hebrew Israelites that are com that are basically coming back to Torah understanding their heritage and what that means in 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 the messianic in the messianic light you know of course of course they you know the Talmudic Jews they they're non messianic and they they come with the star of David and everything else uh, and so they're they're you know they they're, they're in a battle with with those guys and so only love is going to probably talk about that Talk about Operation Joseph. We're gonna talk about the um, the reclaiming the throne event. Uh, also, do some teaching because we want to uh, leave a, a lasting impression on the people that do come, that's new to this. Um, and and there's gonna be some pastors there and some people from the from the Black Church that's gonna be there. And so we want to want to leave a good impression and also uh, have like a little forum panel where we can take um, questions from the audience and and really you know answer a lot of questions and get feedback and. And whatnot, you know, because you know a lot of people see us on YouTube. They hear, they see what we do on Instagram uh, and these little videos, but they actually want to, you know, actually see us in person, talk to us, you know, take pictures, ask questions, uh, get books, you know, get different materials, things like that. Now, um, if you could um, talk to us about, uh, you talked about it a little bit. Uh, you went into it a little bit, but what what are some of um, the few future projects you plan on working on and, and kind of really your goal and your, and like your vision for what you're trying to do. Okay. So, um, right now, um, I got a couple of projects. Uh, one is finishing up the Hebrews to Negroes, um, movie. Um, because that's, uh, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel now. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost at the two hour mark. So the, the, <laughs> The movie is like almost at its last leg, and I'm trying to figure out whether to uh, make the movie two hours and stop it at two hours, or go over go over a little bit of two hours because 
a lot of people say, oh, black people, our attention span is only 90 minutes. You know, it's only only 90 minutes. Don't do longer than two hours, Ryan. But then some people are like, they're hungry. Like, no, Ryan, if you gotta if you gotta cram in a little bit more, yeah, give it to us. Give it to us because we don't know, you know, how long it's gonna take for you guys to come up with the next project. So, uh, I'm I'm focused on finishing that project. Uh, me and Josh are working on reclaiming the throne, finishing that. Um, uh, Josh is coming to to Detroit, uh, and and the Hebrew Nation building crew. So I'm 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 excited for that. And then uh, over uh, if people don't know, over here in Detroit, we have. Uh, some Hebraic um, uh, assemblies and and pastors that are uh, put together the Hebrew Academy of Detroit. So the Hebrew Academy of Detroit is uh, it's like a, it's going to be a brick and mortar physical class where people can come to in Detroit and get and get taught um, uh, lessons on this whole Hebrew Israelite movement. Uh, and then we're also going to have online classes. Uh, so it's going to be like an official academy with. Wow. Uh, Gonna have a you know a, a, a fall semester, a winter semester. You're gonna have to uh, choose from your courses. Uh, you can take 16 credit hours. Uh, <laughs> you can take, you can take electives. It's like it's like you go to school and you, you got a course pack. You got a syllabus. You got a list of your instructors. You got their email contacts. We are, we, we we set it up to where we have a, a computerized system where we can do grading and, and interface and, and interact with the students. And so we're scheduled to launch that in in the fall and and so i've been we've been going having meetings about that every every week and so i'm excited about that because this that's this has been a long time coming for this and you got a lot of people in uh the caribbean and in the uk in africa in america that they 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 want to get more teaching than than youtube because youtube is confusing a lot of people and you know you go to one person channel and then they're saying this you go to another person channel and they're saying this um, and then you, you know, you go to, you start seeing some things pop up about Kemet and, you know, young Pharaoh and all these different people talking about this. And then you got somebody saying that, you know, Yahuwah is, is, is the Sumerian God, uh, Enlil and <laughs> he's an angry God that requires blood sacrifice. And, and, and this is not the God of the Bible. We've been deceived. You got all types of doctrines coming out now where people, you know, that used to be Messianic are not Messianic and they're coming up with all types of trickery to really sway people saying, you know, I don't, I don't believe in the Messiah now. You know, the Messiah never really existed. You know, and the Romans made that up. So this academy is going to help um, in, the, in the academy, all the teachers are Messianic. Um, and so we're all on the same board and we're going to be teaching things, in, you know, with, with sound doctrine and truth um, and out of love. And everybody's welcome. I mean, we don't we don't say, you know, uh, Hebrew Israelites only. You know, of course, when you, people register uh, from different um, states and countries we can't we can't screen who's going to be uh, a student who's not uh, so that's that's one of the projects I'm working on and then um, I'm already got in mind uh, a sequel to the Hebrew Sneakers movie um, when the Hebrew Sneakers movie uh, Wake Up Black America is done and and you know we got the podcast show and uh, Joshua and Morris I think they're working on a on a 24 hour radio yeah you know? yeah uh, that's big. That's big time because you know we we got a lot of people that they, we hear about different Hebrew um, rappers and singers. Um, we see their songs on Instagram, we, you know their SoundCloud, uh, but we don't have a actual uh, place where we can go to to hear all these different people's songs and new music uh, and and shows. So I'm I'm excited about Josh um, trying to put forth to put that out. So there's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff we got our hands uh, full with. In, in addition. To raising our families and our kids, yeah, and bills and everything. Yeah, and that and and like I said, that's one of the things when I was uh, talking to, with Josh and Morris when I when I really realized how big what they're doing is, and basically the, the way I said it is, they're taking this Hebrew Israelite movement and making it mainstream. You know what I'm saying? And and preparing it to to go mainstream like i said when, once y'all drop this uh once these documentaries go out it's gonna it's gonna be mainstream it's not gonna be something that they can just ignore and 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 hope not to blow up in their face it's gonna be right there you know what i'm saying it's gonna be a big thing um was there anything else you wanted to bring out and and uh or uh let us know um well, I want I wanted people to know that um that this movement um is is reaching the people that it's meant to reach and it's in a uh, particular time 
uh, that we're in that is supposed to happen. And and I'm I'm seeing a lot of pastors waking up. Uh, a lot of uh, pastors' wives are waking up, and they're, they're saying, "Well, my my husband's a pastor," or you know, kids are saying, "My dad's a pastor." And so you're seeing how there's different ways that the Most High is connecting uh, these churches to wake up, either through the children, through the wives, uh, to somebody that's in the congregation that just happened to read a Hebrew Senegal's book, or they happen to stumble upon a Hebrew Nation Builders YouTube uh, channel. Uh, and so when they, as these churches and different people are waking up, they are becoming realistic of, of how we need to support these these things to teach um, who we are and get it out in, into the mainstream, into the media uh, streams like you know, with music and movies, um, because you know, like you said, the the enemy is 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 working overtime using the media and music and, and movies to keep us asleep, and 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 that's all you see right now. I mean, you, every, if it's not you know talking about LeBron James, King James going to California, and yeah. bringing, bringing jobs and bringing an increased money flow to to California, and then they, everybody got memes about the the, the Cleveland Cavs. You know, we, so we're seeing a, a, a society where if it's not politics, if it's not sports, if it's not, you know, stuff going on, on TV in terms of uh, black, black you know, injustice and, and black on black crime, uh, we, we're constantly, you know, in the in the in the hamster wheel of, of yeah. their uh, their brainwashing. Yeah. And, and we have to uh have these things like what Hebrew Nation Building and myself and other people are doing to combat uh what's going on in the media. And unfortunately, you know, like we talked about um the Jews, they own Instagram, they own Facebook, they own WhatsApp, you know, the Google is 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 reporting to the CIA. And so a lot of the truth that we're putting out, you know, we have to be careful because they are shutting people down. They're all watching us. They 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 you know they have certain people on the hit list. Um whatever kind of list that is, uh, like Project Megiddo, whatever. But, you know, I mean, we, we just have to stay uh, positive and keep and keep going because um, the Most High is blessing us, even though Satan is trying to throw roadblocks in our way. And um, I don't know. I just I just uh, I encourage people to, um, to when they, if they can, to donate to to our projects. You know, we're out here. Um, we're the little guys. You know, we're, we're not... Uh, Amar Stoudemire, we're not, you know, uh, Hebrews that are into the truth that's already in the industry making millions of dollars, or uh, we don't have uh, 2.5 million uh, of viewers or, or followers, you know, where if you send out one post, you know, one trailer clip on your social media site, then all these people are seeing it. You know, you know, I think, you know, we had, like, I think Joshua and Morris, they, they're rising up their, their, uh, their following on YouTube to about, you know, maybe 12, 13,000. But, you know, you see a lot of black people that are rich, a lot of black people that have a lot of social media presence uh, on Facebook and Instagram and, and Twitter, and they know, they, 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 they of course, they've, they've heard that we're the Israelites um, from walking and passing in New York or somebody telling them that or, or just going on YouTube and seeing that. So they know who we are, but they're also trapped in that Hollywood system. Uh, and they can't bite the hand that feeds them. But nevertheless, I still would say to them that you know, we still have to stand for the truth. You know, we can't let money or mammon be our God uh, and control us. And, and at some point, we're going to have to think about the overall um, nation of our people, of Israel. of the Exactly. Bible. Exactly. According, according to Bible scriptures and end times prophecy, it's going to get worse for us. It's going to mm. be more persecution as we wake up and we come back to Torah, follow the commandments and also the gospels of Christ. Uh, and so knowing who we are is critical. And also helping these projects um, pop off is critical because it all requires finances. Right? Yeah, finances. finances. Um, now, um, brother, brother uh, Josh, uh, brother Josh is watching. He said, "What's up to you?" And oh. uh, <laughs> and uh, he had a question. Um, well, I'm sorry, Sister Esther, and and Sister Esther, I appreciate you. Uh, Thank, thanks for putting this, setting this whole thing up, because she was the go-between who set, yeah, was, you know, was. put me down with. But she had a question. She said, uh, "Can you ask uh, Ronald if he can name off some of the Hebrew tribes in Africa that people don't know about, but they are waking up now?" Oh, <laughs> oh this is me, man. Well, you know, you you got okay. You got like. Uh, of course, people know about the Ebos. Uh, the Baptist people, 
are unique people. Uh, their DNA is pretty much all uniform and the same. Uh, so we have different tribes <coughs> in Africa. They go by different names. They, they have different language dialects. Um, they're so, sometimes grouped on their families. Uh, so we already know about the Ibibio, Efek, and Calabar. You got the, the Ibos, of course, people know, the, the Yorubas, the Edo, Bini people in uh, southwest eastern Nigeria. Um, you also have the 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 Ewe, you have the Kab Kabye people, which is which is the the, the northern part of, of Togo. Uh, the, the southern part you have mostly Ewe, and then you have the Fon or the Fanti. You have the Ga, you have the Ashanti, and you have the the Akons that are, that are in Ivory Coast. I mean, you have the Temne, you have the True, uh, the the Crew tribes that are over in Sierra Leone, uh, uh, Liberia, the the the, the Basa. Uh, the the Mosi tribe in, in Burkina Faso. When you start to go over to Gambia, of course you got the the Orgini of Gambia. You had the Men, the Mende, uh, larger tribe, and then you have the Wolof and the Serer and the, and the Tukulur, uh and the tribes in that area and the Sunike uh, tribes uh, that are over in Senegal, Gambia, Mauritania, Mali, uh, and even in Niger they got some tribes uh, uh, the, that that they uh, I forgot I think it's called the Zerma tribe in, in Niger. Uh, they descended from the Songhai dynasty uh, when, when they had, uh, before uh, Askia Muhammad uh, came to power and set Islam up, uh, you had Sunni Ali, all those guys, you know, the, the Hebrew Israelite dynasties and the Ghana and the Mali, like, they basically descended from that empire that was all Hebrew Israelites. And then, But people don't really know that you ha also have Israelites in Central Africa, like in, in the Congo, the, with, the, with the Bakongo people, and in Angola, uh, and then the Iwando, and then the Cameroon with the Tikar, and the Babenki, and the, and the Bamaleke, and the Duala, and the Basa. And if you keep going down to the, the Tutsis, and the Hereros, and you go to the Xosa, and the, and the Zulus, and the Shonas, and the, the Ewe, and the, not the, with the Chuas, the Chuas, and the, and the Yaos, and even if you go start going up East Africa, you, mean, you just run into Kenya, you got the Kikuyu, you got the Kisi, you got the Kamba, you got the, the Luya, and in <laughs> Tanzania, you got the Sukuma. I mean, it's the, the Bantus people are all over the place. Wow. Uh, and there's there's also smaller tribes that are Bantus that are basically the cousins of the bigger tribes. Uh, so, you know, Prophetic Whirlwind, she knows a lot about these tribes. Um, and then I also talk about them as two as well, because for a long time, the myth was that people in Africa were all Hamites. And, that, and that's not true. Even though we all uh, are black uh, people, you have different nations that are mixed, mixed up <laughs> in as well. She she said uh, she said now you see why we call my big brother the Hebrew Encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't even remember that many names. Period of anybody. <laughs> well, see when I when I start reciting DNA uh, of these tribes too, uh, D, the DNA is a whole other level that I go into that really um, opens the eyes of of of, of now, the. Now I got a question about that. Um, what do you, or and I, I there was a brother he did a documentary on the E1B1A. You talking about um is it Dr. Ben Yehushua or, or Ephraim Yeh something Yehushua? I think so. I mean This is a while ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. he, he did a little documentary on that. What do you know anything about that? Like uh what's it on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, I mean, he's the main one that I think came out with the E1B1A um, whole, you know, theory and 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 linking it to the Negroes. And I mean, he's on point with that aspect. Um, but you know, uh, there is some things that, that that are that are that are incorrect that that um, I can prove that are incorrect in his uh, his other theories and, beca and behind the E1B1B and other DNA types. But he doesn't really he doesn't really go to um, all the DNA types, because I use, I, you know, my books, I kind of cover all the DNA types from A all the way to T. Oh, okay. Because when you look at the whole globe or the whole planet Earth, you got DNA types all over the place. You know, you got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, it's all, it just goes all the way down. And and this basically, the DNA shows you the migration routes of, of people groups, like people that just migrated their, their group of people to one area. You know, like Australia Aborigines or the Andaman Islands with the with the Anji people that they're really dark in, in the Bay of Bengal, uh, south of India. You know, so you got different people scattered in different areas 
and they have different DNA types. You know, like in North Africa, in the, in the Maghreb, or, or if you go to, to Spain or Portugal, uh, you'll see E1B1A and also R1B, uh, R1B. Uh, and and people, and that that is a telltale sign of your paternal lineage and and, and who you descend from, in a sense. Uh, but but of course, um, unless we do uh, DNA testing of, of tribes in Africa, which which they have done, you know, and then you can start to see like, oh, you know, these people over here in Nigeria, they all have E1B1A. You go over to the Congo, 98% of the people you test in Congo, or 99% of them are all E1B1A, except for maybe the pygmies. Uh, same thing in Cameroon. So in that whole area of, of Cameroon and the Congo and Nigeria or the slave coast, and even Angola, you will see the highest concentration of E1B1A Bantus Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. And then from there, many people say you had the Bantus expansion where people went different ways, especially to South Africa. Okay. Um, uh, all right. Uh, somebody on here had a question. They wrote, have you researched the Hebrews in, and I might not pronounce this right, but I'm going to try it, uh, E-tree, so it's E-R-I-T-R-E-A, huh? Eritrea, Eritrea. Yeah, and yeah. and they put and the Yiber, so Y-I-B-I-R in Somalia. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, I know. And, yeah, they, I... and they said, do you know anything about these tribes? Yeah, the, well, the, the tribe that she's talking about, well, whoever that is talking about in Somalia, they're they're a tribe that uh that say they are Hebrew Israelites, uh, and they're in Somalia. A lot of times you have these offset offset groups of people, um, that are scattered in Somalia, or or like you said, Eritrea, or Ethiopia. Some of them have have migrated further south into Kenya, uh, and they all claim to have Hebrew Israelite ancestry. I don't know their their what their DNA is, but most of the times. Um, especially in Africa, when you have West African tribes that say that they are um, descendants of the Hebrew Israelites, and you say, oh, what, what tribe are you from? And you go on the internet, you Google, you'll find out that this specific tribe you may not have heard nothing about, and say uh, Malawi or Swaziland, you say, oh, man, these guys are E1B1A, and these guys are saying the same thing. Um, so so I'm not surprised. You know, I talk about that that group in Somalia. They did have a, they did have a slave... Um, Coat was a slave port in Somalia. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of slaves were taken from Somalia. They had a slave port um, in in uh, Eritrea. They had a slave port. They took slaves out of Ethiopia. Uh, I mean, you got you got E one B one A seen in Ethiopia, but the uh, Eritrean people is are the Habasha people. Uh, they're really unique because they their language um, is similar to the the Ethiopian Jews language of Ge'ez or the Ethiopian uh, Coptic Church. And so when you look at Ge'ez, you look at the Tigray or Tigrayan, and you look at um, the Amharic language over in that region, and you also go back to Hebrew, you'll see a ton of similarities in, in their language and Hebrew. And when you research their ancient history and, and some of the names of the cities in Eritrea, uh, and they have Eritrean uh, book authors, and they say the same thing, that they are the sons of Israel, but they claim that they had left Israel, like during the time of the Assyrian siege, and they kind of scattered and, and were residing in uh, Assyria or Syria, and they were called like the Syrio Judeans. And eventually, according to some of their uh, histor historical documents, they eventually migrated down south into the western part of Arabia, and then eventually migrated across from western side of Arabia, uh, which is which is uh, like a part of Habasha land, into Ethiopia. And when they cross over into the Red Sea or the Horn of Africa to Ethiopia, then they had to find their niche in that area of Abyssinia. And this is why you had the Ethiopian Eritrean Wars and, and, and Eritrea gained their independence from Ethiopia. And they had their little niche right there um, in Abyssinia. Uh, they're all really like kind of like the same people. But, you know, of course, you have tribal battles and wars. And, and when you look at the DNA of a lot of the Ethiopian Jews and the Amharics and the Tigrayan people, yes, you will see some uh, Arabic uh, influence uh, from the Arabs from you know over in Arabia, but you'll also see our DNA as well as um, uh, an ancestral form of our DNA. Because the, the the purest ancestral form of our DNA, E1B1A, started off in in like Northeast Africa, 
you know, where the Hebrews were, you know, basically in 400 years being living in Egypt and also living in, you know, being close to Sudan. But Moses, you know, that that whole area is like, is like East, Northeast Africa. Um, all right. And I, I had a. Uh... Now, how how the the white Jews they they're getting their DNA where they where they say they go back or <laughs> they say a, a small percentage of them go back to the um, to the ancient Hebrews, and I I, I want to uh, on a video I watched I want to say they were saying that the way they do that is they just get some. A uh, strand of DNA that's similar to everybody else's, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, they, <laughs> well, the Jews they lie. Uh, um, and and when you look at uh, how they come up with the model, the the Cohen model haplogroup, group, which is the the J one C haplogroup, group that they say, oh, the Lemba Jews have it too. They're 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 the, they're the Levites, whatever. You know that they're they're doing these things to confuse people, and they don't they think that black people we don't know anything about genetics. We're not going to read the articles. We're not going to read the whole article, not just part of the article about the Lemur Jews and, and, and what are the DNA testing results show with the Lemur Jews. Um, and then they also say, oh, well, the Levites, the Levite clans, uh, they always were found to have R1, uh, R1A1A, you know, uh, white DNA paternal. That makes them a Levite, you know. But when you look at the, uh, the overall uh, consensus, if you, if you gather all the Ashkenazi Jews together and you, start, and you test all their white DNA from their father, you will see an a, 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 a array of different uh, Y DNA types. You're gonna see E1B1B. You're gonna see R1A. You're gonna see R1B. You're gonna see J. You're gonna see J1, J2. You can see N. You're gonna see I. You're gonna see X. You're gonna see all these different things. That means that your people weren't really a people that left from because they always say, "Oh, we left Israel when the Second Temple was destroyed. We traveled up north to to to, to Europe and we got lighter." That's a lot of times they say that we got lighter. Uh, but that doesn't show forth in their DNA. Their DNA shows that their, their paternal ancestry comes from all over the place. But the key is that the Hebrew Israelites, they normally, the, if a man married another woman that was not a Hebrew Israelite, she had to, of course, adopt the Torah and, 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 and the Tanakh and, and, and the religion of, of the Jews or the Israelites. And so in that case, you've seen that tradition seen in the Ethiopian Jews. You've seen that tradition seen in the Lemur Jews. Um, and that's why you see different DNA types. Um, but when you look at the Bantus people in West Africa, you will always see that they kept it in a paternal lineage. So you always see everybody over in West Africa, they're always going to be E1B1A, straightforward. And the same thing over here in America for us and in the Caribbean and, it, and also in the UK. It's, you, you're going to see that in our blood, even though we had slavery and we had the white man somewhere trickle down in our grandmothers or whatever, you're going to see that the most black people, when they test their DNA, that they're going to be anywhere from like 60 some percent to like 90 some percent E1, B1A, Sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah. That's all we're going to be. We might have like 10 percent European, 1 percent Native American. It's always going to be over 60 percent. So we're we're more like South Africa. But when you look at the white Jews, the white Jews have an array of paternal lineage. And this is the reason why I believe that they use the maternal lineage to distinguish who they are. But the maternal lineage in the Ashkenazi Jews is straight across the board European, all European uh, DNA types. And so they, and, and when you when you really connect their um their their DNA, uh, their autosomal DNA, you connect their their traditions and customs, the way they dance, and then when they, the way they twirl around, they and they drop down, they kick their legs out, and they holding hands, and they swaying back and forth. Uh, this is something that was practiced in Central Asia. When you had where you had Kazakhstan, you had Uzbekistan, you had Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, the area that you had the the Khazars and the Bulgars and the Hunnic people uh, and the Mongols. These are these are all in the same area. They all came. Yeah, from like like Russia. Yeah, like like because I've seen I've that seen like that, those like, uh, uh, those dances those dance, the Russians, Russians do. do. Yeah, the Hebrew Israelites the Hebrew Israelites never danced the way that the Ashkenazis, no. especially the Orthodox Ashkenazis that have the big um. The big yeah, hats, yeah, like yeah. like cylinders, they when they start dancing, they you could tell that their dances come from over in that area in yeah. Russia and Central Asia. They don't have nothing Hebraic about them, you yeah. know. But you know, of course, they come to Africa and learn all the the real Hebraic traditions and customs 
from what the you know people the ebos are doing and the other benches people now um let, uh Okay, that's a good question. Uh, one of the sisters on here just asked, what DNA services are trustworthy? That's a good question. Okay, so, um, you know, the, the African, African Ancestry is a, a DNA company that is uh, ran by black people. The, the leading geneticist, um, uh, Mr. Dr. Kittles, uh, he has uh, numerous years behind his belt in doing genetic research. He's a black guy. The one, the one that's, a, I think she's co-CEO, she's a black woman. They have their own database, and they have everybody else's database. And so when they when they put all their information together, they're not able just to tell you that you come from Nigeria and Cameroon and you got a little bit of, of uh, Ben in Togo, but they're able to use the different the genetic markers, we call them S&Ps and STRs, to determine your actual tribe and there's ways you can do that i mean it's, it's it's like when you um the building blocks of who we are is our dna and so they can figure out genetic mutations based on certain uh their certain parts of the genetic uh, uh rna the sequence and they can now they can do they can do dna sequencing and they can fix certain things in the womb so that when you come out you have you don't you're less likely to have sickle cell but they're able to tell by the genetic imprint of our dna our DNA strand, and look at all the markers. They could they could tell you that, okay, everybody over here in the in the Bamaleke tribe in Cameroon, their DNA strand matches basically like 98 percent up, 98 percent with your DNA strand. Wow. So this means that you're most likely your ancestral uh, uh, forefathers came from the Bamaleke tribe, okay. and they can do, they can do the same thing with the maternal DNA too as well. Awesome. So I, I would I would go to African ancestry first. And, and and see what the results are uh, these other ones they, they you know they are they will i mean they for the most part you know 23 and me and family tree dna they're, they're gonna for black people they're gonna pretty much tell you that you come from west africa you know that's that's a given you know they're not gonna tell you, you come from scandinavia norway you know like that so the tests do have those other tests do have some validity to it but if you want more trustworthy sources and and this confidence that you know it's not being manipulated and, and, and being, you know, you know, uh, like the Jews are doing something to your DNA, then, then I would just say go to African ancestry. Okay. So, so African ancestry. Um, and then, uh, we got another question. It's what about Madagascar and the Malagasy people that are Hebrews? Do you know the clans or tribes from Madagascar? Yeah, there, there's, um, there's some tribes in Madagascar that have the 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 E1 V1A markers. Um of course it's not it may not be all of them because we also had uh the Dutch like the Dutch slave ships they well the Dutch had ships too and they brought slaves from Asia from Southeast Asia. Uh so you see a lot of mixture with the black people with uh people that that came from India or came from parts of Asia. So you see like a, an array of different facial features in the people there. But you do have certain tribes, because they're broken down to like different tribes and they have different names. And a lot of times the names are really long and they're like really um, hard to pronounce names. Um, but some of them do say that they that their forefathers were Abraham and they practice circumcision and, and they have uh, burial sites or tombs where they're in Hebrew, where they're written in Hebrew. And, uh, and, and when you look at um, these things, and you say that their DNA is not the same as the Ashkenazi's DNA or the Sephardic DNA, then you know it's not because of the Ashkenazi's and Sephardic Jews just decided to take a vacation trip to Madagascar and they stayed there with their family. It's because these people actually were descendants of the Hebrew Israelites. That, because Madagascar is just a part of, of, of Africa, and a lot of times the ships, they will kind of go back and forth between Madagascar and Africa, and slaves were dropped off, picked up, and whatnot. Okay. Um, let me see. And then someone asks, uh, is, is DNA tribes a good DNA database? And then Sister Esther also put here that national, <clears throat> excuse me, National Geographic NatGo 2.0 is way better than the AfricanAncestry.com. Uh, one, one and costs a lot less 
big bro. So yeah, they, they yeah they could try. They could. I've heard somebody try to use the use the Nat Geo one. I mean, you know, they all use the same techniques to to get your Y DNA or your maternal DNA. Uh, so yeah, I mean they. You know, they, when they get when you send your sample in, you know they they gotta give you what you you know what you said. They're not gonna give you some off the wall reading like like if you're from uh, you know Native America or South America or Peru. They're not gonna tell you your DNA type is from Peru when you gave a sample that, that clearly is, is West African. Yeah. Um. And do you do you know Doctor Kittles? No, no, I don't know. I don't know Doctor Kittles, but I I want I was gonna try to email him and try to you know talk to him on the phone and meet yeah. and. I don't know about meeting him, but talking on the phone and, and kind of tell him what I found out about, you know, the DNA studies and, and genetic articles I've been reading and, and, and connecting it to the Bible and, and, and what. Okay. Um, something, uh, something else I wanted to hit on and we talked about a little earlier um, and just any of you brothers out there who are working on these projects, just a point I wanted to make is it is so important to make sure you have a website and that you're not just relying on social media because like I said, when this, when this video hit you, <laughs> folks accounts going to be getting cut off and stuff. And while I'm on that subject, I wanted to show y'all this brother's website It's uh, the Negro network. And let me see is the Negro network.com. This is his website. He has uh, all of his information on it. It's a real professionally done website. Um, yeah. You know, he got a shop, news, podcasts, events, all that stuff like that to where, you know, if something happens, you got a place to run to. I got my wife. Uh, she, I'm getting ready to put her to task on building my website because she makes websites real good. So... I'm going I'm to get mine together before it's too late because some of y'all, if they, if, because you know, Google and uh, Google, YouTube and Facebook, um, they're owned by, you know, Jews. So you know, mm -hmm. they get angry. They just hit the button on your thing and you history. <laughs> well, look, well, well, if you don't, if you notice. Uh, on the website, I have a, a little, little, little bar that says Hebrew Academy, and so, and I got events, you know, and and um, and so what I'm what I'm planning on doing is because I got a lot of uh, information that's just sitting over here, and I don't have a YouTube channel because I got I got a lot of kids, and it's it's just it'll be too much chaos, and uh, so what I'm gonna try what I'm gonna try to do is get all my information that I have that that I, that I haven't put in books yet or I haven't taught in front of churches yet because a lot of times the churches they say oh you can only teach for you can only speak for about an hour an hour or two max that's it and so usually what happens is when i finish after two hours i only been i already went through maybe like 150 slides and i say i'm like Man, i got like six thousand plus slides that i can show you about you know and even more in my head that i can t teach you and so like you said youtube and instagram are good tools with, with, with putting out the information but you know, like he's like like um, there's a guy named Truth Unveiled 777. He had he had over 250,000 followers. He had a quarter of a million followers, and and he you know when you get to that many followers, you know they're they're cutting you checks. They're cutting you checks because they're they're spending out ads, and you got so many people coming in that they're cutting you checks, and you're getting like like money like like it's a job. And <laughs> he was putting out so much information on the false flags, the shootings who we are as the Hebrew Israelites, the synagogue of Satan, the fake Jews, and all sort of stuff, that they shut his channel down. Wow. And and, and he has a new channel called Truth uh, Truth Unveiled, I think, 777 Archive. And But he he did archive, archive a lot of his stuff, but he said that just them taking all that stuff down, it was kind of a big blow and a, and a downer because now you have to kind of like find all your archives and start putting stuff back up. And you go, and when you when you do all these videos and stuff, that takes time. It could, it could take money, and it's tedious. And for the YouTube to all of a sudden say, you know what, we get tired of you, and then put, like you said, push the button and you're done. You know, I can't even. I got a Facebook page, but I can't even post on Facebook no more. No videos, no po no no photos. Facebook does not allow me to post videos on face on videos or, or or pictures on Facebook, and that and that's been wow. since two years ago. So I only use Facebook for the uh, for the podcast show. Wow. 
Instagram, look, Instagram is the same way. Instagram, you, you start putting out too much truth, they'll say, uh, they'll give you warnings like you just violated community guidelines. We took your post down. If you if you were if you don't agree with this, then let us know. But the more times you violate their community guidelines, you know you can put up a video about Damon Dash talking about culture vultures and talking about the the Jewish people in the in the industry controlling stuff, and they will take it down. But if you you can have actual porn on Instagram, and they'll keep it up. Wow. So so we know that it's an attack on on this truth. And that's why we gotta have, you know, like 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 Hebrew Nation Building has a website. We gotta have our websites. We gotta have our information on these websites as well, so that people can keep going to see what we got, what we gotta show. And like I said, this is his website. It's uh, the Negro Network dot com, and um, and I know it's. I saw where a sister. Uh, um, it was it was a couple of. Uh, a couple months ago, I don't know if it's still going, but she started a, a Hebrew Israelite uh, social media network, and yeah. um, she had done it with. They have uh, open source software mm -hmm. for social media. It's like a social media program. It's open source, so mm -hmm. and that's something. If somebody's up to that, if that's their calling, <laughs> jump on it. You no, know, Mike, we really, we really need a Hebrew shop like a like a virtual mall where all the hebrews can have their stuff on and you can you can if you need clothing you click on the clothing tab and then you open you see all the stores of hebrews that are selling clothes you need like like butter like you need like lotions and soap you click on you know you know just you know different things like that even even like you know food and and, and livestock and and housing you know uh, medicine herbals you know or we need like something where all the hebrews can go to to connect where we can all start to have like you know an economy within the side of a, an economy exactly we can keep it within the system but we don't see we don't know about the hebrews in other other uh states that are that are that are good with sewing clothes and and, and adding fringes and and, see, and, and that I, i'm huge with i'm all about everybody like me i'm an auto mechanic and I that's one of my big things. If I run into brothers around here in the local area who need their car worked on, I could do it. And um, one of the brothers I linked up with, he worked in the medical industry, and a lot of people really don't think they know anything, but it's like you're doing this day in and day out, and mm -hmm. you don't realize the knowledge you have, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people really need to tap into what are you good at? You know, that's that's a big one, man. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. That's yeah. all that's, that's all part of a community. Black Wall Street, everybody had their 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 role to play. And that's yeah. why Black Wall Street was so successful. Um somebody had a question, Mark. Let me see. Somebody answer this question. Yeah. Uh, so some sister said, "What about Black Junction TV?" I, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, sis, I, I heard. I just I heard of that, but I don't. I'm not too familiar with it. And I know I know there's a TV. It, it's almost like a Black Netflix. It, it's called Quali TV. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a good. Uh, Something like that is good. It'd be a good avenue to share your documentary on and all that stuff like that because they want quality content. But I, you know, I don't know how big that's gotten. But um, yeah, brother, that that was uh, Ron. That was a good interview. Hey, and I'm gonna be straight up. I didn't know you knew all that information, man. Like you just rattling all that stuff off. I'm I'm gonna have to go back and watch this video with a pen and paper. To go through all that, cause that was heavy, man. I didn't know you were that study. That that was impressive. Um, but with that said, if uh, I don't see any other questions here, uh, hold on one sec. It says I think it'd be a good idea to make like an international Hebrew chart to show the Hebrews. Okay, that's a good suggestion. The brother suggested um. I think it would be a good idea to make like an international Hebrew chart to show the Hebrews across the globe, the countries they are in and their tribes as well, especially in the Middle East. Uh, 
Yeah, so that is a good idea. So it's visual. So you have a kind of a visual aid, you know, where everybody's scattered at. But like like the word said, we scattered all over. <laughs> yeah, we are. We yeah. are. But um, with that said, man, it, that was a good interview. I think we're going to wrap it up now. Um, if Brother Josh is still watching, uh, we're going to work on putting one together with both of you brothers on there so y'all can talk more about, you know, the projects you're working on. Um, and that's going to be sooner than later. They're not, um, ready. They're not ready for Josh to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so we're going to put something together. Um, hopefully in the coming days, uh, I'll be working that behind the scenes and it, hopefully you guys will see it pop up here. But uh, with that said, uh, Ronald, you got anything else you want to tell everybody? Uh, no, no. I mean, just, just uh, you know, uh, just if you're on Instagram, you can go, you can follow me while, while I still got a page at uh, uh, <laughs> Hebrews, Hebrews underscore two underscore Negroes. Uh, they want to see some of the posts I put on, on Instagram. I used to feed feed all the posts from Instagram straight to Facebook, but Facebook got said, no, 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 you got you, you you're climbing too fast, and too many people are getting a vote on Facebook, so they shut me down on Facebook. But um, you know, we're we're not stopping, we're 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 steady moving, just like the enemy is moving uh, to get this truth and wake up our people. And uh, Josh is, uh, I don't know where Josh sleeps, but he he's 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 got so many tasks that he has. I feel like I wish I was in his state with him to help him out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all work it overtime, you know. Yeah. Uh, been like oh two o'clock three o'clock in the morning doing stuff in addition to going to work so i just say everybody pray for us pray for our families um don't forget that we need we need everybody's help uh financially to help do these things you know uh, i mean it'd be great if we could just, just devote all of our time to working on the movie and traveling and getting the footage and 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 writing out books you know constantly cause I, I mean i got so much information um i just don't have the time sometimes to write all these books because I got to focus on one project, you know, yeah. finishing the book, helping with Reclaiming the Throne, the podcast, uh, the Hebrew Academies. Uh, but I am, I am still, you know, planning on finishing book five and book six and getting all this information out. There's a ton of information about um, the lost tribes and, and how they were scattered to the to four corners of the earth that people still need to know. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, yeah, I'm uh, Michael Israel. That was uh, Brother Ronald Dalton. And um, you're watching Spiritual Combat. And I hope this interview was informative to everybody. I hope it's getting the word out. And because uh, I enjoyed interviewing him. And with that said, shalom. Shalom.